All right, guys. Uh, like I said, my name is James Thurman. I'm the uh, athletic director and offensive coordinator here at Glenbrook School in Minden, Louisiana. Um, this is my fourth year here. Uh, this past year, uh, Coach Reagan Smith took over as our head coach and asked me to be his offensive coordinator. Uh, prior to that, I was a defensive coordinator here for a few years under Coach Feaster, David Feaster. Uh, prior to that, I was a head coach at Plain Dealing for five years, um, and then I was at Glenbrook before that, and then multiple stops prior to that. Been my this was my 24th year uh, coaching high school football. Um, over those 24 years, I've ran everything from uh, my first stop here at Glenbrook. Uh, quarterback I had that year through for over the four years I had him, uh, he graduated over 10,000 yards passing and over 100 yards, uh, 100 touch, 100 touchdowns rather. Uh, senior year throwing for over 4,100 yards and 49 touchdowns. So uh, we went through the playoffs, all the way to the semifinals that year. Um, the whole playoffs, we were five wide exclusively. Um, and then fast forward to uh, Plain Dillon, um, had, you know, went to the quarterfinals my second year there with 22 kids, two of those were eighth graders. Uh, and we were in the double tight double wing. So I've run, you know, everything from five wide to double tight double wing and everything in between. Um, and one thing I've kind of done uh, throughout my career is, you know, I've always been real big on uh, formations and as well as uh, really adapting what we do to our players. Um, and, you know, when you have a small number like that, I've, I've been in a lot of 1A programs and we've dealt with a lot of uh, rosters that we had to kind of be very uh, creative what we did. Um, and, you know, currently we um, here at Glenbrook, we uh, fairly small roster. Uh, we got a lot of linemen, a lot of size, um, have a really good quarterback. We had a couple of good athletes last year, but we really weren't capable of being a, a true spread team. So we kind of morphed into something that, you know, that I was familiar with. Uh, ran a lot of, you know, under center, double tight, double wing, as well as uh, some single wing, shotgun, wing T type uh, stuff. So, um, but I wanted to, instead of talking about just double wing stuff in general, I wanted to talk about running the middle wedge. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of clips to share. Uh, for the most part. So I kind of was hesitant on doing this. I was actually going to do some talk on some, uh, uh, some buck sweep out of multiple formations, but you know, you can find that all over the internet. Uh, you're not going to find a whole lot of stuff on running in the middle wedge. Um, so I really wanted to talk on that because if you try to go and try to search things, you're not going to find a whole lot. So I wanted to make sure that I can kind of share a little bit of that. Um, and you know, what it's done for us over the last, uh, you know, last several years that I've, I've used it. Um, even, um, that year in 2013, we threw the ball a whole lot. Uh, a lot of times we would get in some, some spread formations with an up back and we would direct snap the ball to him and he would run wedge. And um, I think over the course of uh, two years, we hit almost a thousand yards just on the wedge. Um, uh, that year being a spread team and the next year we had to kind of adapt. We lost all of our, our quarterback and a lot of good receivers. We ran more of a wing T offense and we ran wedge out of that. So over those two years, we ran almost a thousand yards just on this play. Um, so why, why did, you know, why do I like to run the wedge? Well, you know, I'm not really, I know this is smash mouth old school football. So I know we don't really, really want to talk a whole lot about inside zone, outside zone, things like that. So, you know, as my primary inside run, you know, outside of trap or anything like that, I don't really run inside zone. I like to run wedge as much as possible. Um, and one, one of the main reasons we get a massive humanity at the point of attack, you know, we're putting, you know, thousand pounds at a point at the point of attack for the most part you know if your your guys all weigh 200 plus pounds get those five guys up in there uh on a, on a point you know we're really all pushing together uh at one point and really can get a lot of movement and it really it creates a, a really bad situation for a nose guard or you know or a tackle um some people especially in double wing uh Football like to try to either, you know, wedge on the guard or, you know, wedge on the center middle wedge or wedge on the guard. I prefer just middle wedge. Uh, we tend to keep our guards and everybody back as far as we can. And I don't really like the idea of the center trying to get behind that guard to try to wedge up in there. So uh, we li I like to run middle wedge more than anything. Um, it's fairly easy to teach. You know, within one day, you can pretty much teach the fit, uh, teach some drills, and they kind of get it at that point. Um, you don't have to, you know, go over, you know, multiple times, multiple days. Once they learn it and you rep it, they kind of get it. Uh, you can use smaller kids, you know, obviously the bigger, the better, but you know, it, since we are getting a lot of double, triple, you know, quadruple teams, uh, you can uh, be uh, successful with smaller kids. Um, and like I said, this can be your only a gap run play. You know, if you're a, a spread team and 
Uh, not, we'll talk a little bit about different ways that you can implement it into your offense based upon what exactly you're running. Um, but, you know, there's been years where this was my only A-gap run play. Like I said, that one year uh, when we threw for so many yards, um, we ran power and stretch. But as far as we didn't run trap or dive, you know, wedge was our only run play. Um, so here are some disadvantages that I feel like that I've encountered over the years running this play. Uh, it definitely takes patience. Um, you know, in order for the wedge to work, the wedge has to stay together. Um, you know, if, if uh, the fullback gets in a hurry and tries to find just a, you know, a, a a little bit of daylight and he sees it and pops it instead of staying in the wedge. Uh, what may have you know, been a 10, 15 yard gain turns into like a four or five yard gain. Um, the linemen have to stay together and like I said, it must be disciplined. Um, one of the biggest problems I've had in the past is my center trying to uh, fire out um, and get ahead. And then everybody's playing catch up to him now. Whereas we can tell him to kind of fire off and, and make a starting point. And you're going to feel that, that weight come behind you and, and get to pushing. Um, and, you know, one kid can, can ruin the whole thing. If one kid does not get his fit right, if one kid uh, falls down, that creates a, a seam, and then a, a defender can slide in there and make the tackle. Um, and one, one of the uh, – I'm supposed to say diving. Uh, I'm just making this pretty quick. Um, diving defensive linemen can cause a problem. You know, that's, that's one of the main um, tactics some defenses use. They try to create a pile at the point. Um and when they do this, uh, you know, the, the idea of there's there's two different schools of thought when you talk to the – especially to the double wing guys, uh, how do you counteract when D-line are, are diving at your leg and trying to create a pile? Uh, some say trample on them. You know, you just you just step and just keep stepping. And when they get stepped on a few times, you know, they'll, they'll stop doing that. Uh, and then some will actually take their arms and try to scoop up under them and just almost like a forklift and just kind of drive them back. Um one of, one of the things that, you know, if, if they start doing that, they're, they're taking away that. And I, I feel like they're, uh, they're, if they're allocating a lot of resources in, in both A gaps, I feel like there are other areas that we can uh, attack them. So that's kind of how I personally um, try to uh, get around D linemen who are diving at our feet. Um, so here, here's the basic fit. And I learned this um, probably name that most of you probably hadn't heard. Some of you may have the Steve Kalande back in the, around 2010, 11, something like that, I created a uh, clinic video that I happened to catch and um, got up and demonstrated this. And um, so what we're trying to do is, as a, you say your left guard, once that center has fired off, we're trying to fit our right uh, forearm and shoulder right on his left butt cheek. And we're trying to squeeze our right ear on his hip as close as we can. And we're going to be right behind and we're going to drive our shoulder through his butt. Uh, the, the right guard is going to do the same thing. We're trying to bring our hips as close together as possible. And basically at that point, we're creating three man, a three man wedge. And then from that point, those are the really only solid that we feel like we should never get to have a problem with is, is those three guys fitting in uh, the tackles. Obviously, you know, they're going to get into that fit, but it's a longer reach for them. And of course the tight ends. And, you know, this here is just showing a, a two tight end formation, but uh, you're not always going to have that depending on what you're doing. But, if we can get those five guys to fit in there as close as possible and get that running back uh, ball carrier to really just fit into that wedge and ride it and be patient um, and everybody just take short, choppy steps and real power steps, then um, it usually will, you know, it's usually going to be pretty good to get three, four, five yards. Um, you know, you, as far as ball carriers, you know, you can hand off to a fullback. Uh, some people, I've talked to people who run the wedge simply as a quarterback sneak. That's, that's the only time they utilize this. I uh, know we've all seen the uh, prevalence of the NFL of the brotherly shove or whatever. Uh, and this is basically kind of what you're doing. Um, it's just you're not afraid. You know, you can run it anywhere on the field. Um, it doesn't have to be fourth down, you know, whatever. And you don't have to actually show it based on formation. But that's kind of the same uh, basic idea of it. Um, so I'm going to go through some formations and just kind of show you uh, things that I've done uh, before I get to a few clips, I don't have a lot of clips. I think I found about seven, uh, you know, with, with huddles, new, uh, uh, the way that you can keep video, you end up running out of space. And I think over the years, some teams that, uh, I've coached for probably deleted some film, some film that I couldn't really find. Um, so it was kind of hard finding things. So I kind of just pulled together some, some clips from this year that we ran out of the actual double wing. Um, but here, you know, of course, like I said, this is just our base formation, double tight, double wing. Um, you, know, you usually get a lot of odd fronts and really 
creates a lot of havoc for that nose guard because he's getting a lot of weight put in him. Um, as we move forward, the things you want to really understand that, that, that makes the wedge uh, go, you have to have something to do with, with the end man line of scrimmage. Uh, here, these, these backers are walked up. Um, there are different ways we try to deal with them. Uh, a lot of times we'll motion one of the wings and fake power or toss, and we'll fake counter with the other one to kind of get their attention. Um, we put these guys in such a conflict anyways, running power and running sweep and things like that, that they're not really crashing down as hard um, as they, you know, try to get to that dive as they would, um, you know, in any situation because they know that they could be getting kicked out or blocked down or whatever reached. Um, especially with all that, you know, window dressing with the wings moving, they don't really know what's coming. So it kind of freezes them a little bit. But, you know, in general, if you're running wedge, you're going to take care of the um, A and B gap defenders. It's those in man line of scrimmage that you have to have something, uh, some way of taking care of them. And we're going to kind of talk about that as we move forward. Um, this is also, you know, we got kind of, a, like I said, a shotgun wing tee, more of a single wing type action. This year, um, nothing really changed. We'll just we'll, we'll motion a guy. We'll dive with that fullback, boot the quarterback out. Uh, just you know, like I said, try to hold one guy, and definitely you know in the, in the uh, second level, third level, but also try to get those those ends kind of frozen a little bit, and we'll just wedge up on those middle guys. Um, back in two thousand, uh, that year we were really really pretty good. We, we got ourselves in a situation. We only had about twenty six kids. Um, and we jumped up on the team real quick. They uh, they went down and scored on us, so they were up seven nothing. Uh, and then with about a minute and a half left in the first quarter, we were up we were up forty two to seven. Um, and we had actually in that game lost one of our best receivers from a, a horse collar broke his collarbone. So we were in a mindset of you know we're in a bad we got to get out of this game. You know how do we do it without keeping our starters in and getting somebody else hurt? And we had a pretty big quarterback. He's about two hundred. 25 pounds, something like that. And we just went empty, double tight. And I think he ran the ball 23 times that night. Um, and we just killed the clock. The clock was already run at that point. But um, we just we ran wedge with him. We just ran just straight up wedge. He was in about a four and a half yard shotgun. Um, we would fake, we'd run some jet out of it. And, uh, you know, we'd hand off jet or we'd fake jet and run wedge. And it allowed us to really just kind of slow the game down, just wear on those guys and, and get us out of the game. Um, but it puts the guys, it puts the defense in a in a, in a pretty um, bad situation here. You know, if you're not doing this to try to kill the clock, but you're actually running this as your offense, I mean, you're having to defend, uh, you know, five vertical threats, immediate vertical threats. Uh, not to mention, you know, you can run power and counter and all kinds of other things, but also the fact that you can run wedge out of this, um, and those ends are now having to kind of come around to try to uh, rush that quarterback, um, and he's already gone up the a gap. That kind of puts them in a bad spot. Um, but like I said, that really paid, you know, great dividends for us that year. We were able to get out of that game by running this play. Um, this is also that same year. Like I said, we, you know, we tried it a little bit this year, had a little bit of success, but we didn't run it as much. Um, this is our, like I said, we threw the ball a whole lot. Quarterback was about at seven yards normally. Um, ends were thinking, you know, pass rush. A lot of times we would just run by those guys and our five guys would just crush, you know, the interior defense. We, you know, gain five or six yards a pop. Um, kind of, uh, it's, it's a little bit dangerous. You got to practice it because you are snapping to an offset fullback. Um, but if you're willing to put in that time and, uh, you know, and, and work on that, it will, you know, be a pretty good, uh, play to kind of counteract any kind of, uh, pass rush and things like that it really slows that down a little bit. And it gives you a good run source, uh, if you're a really heavy pass team. Um, this is something we've, I've done several years. We get into this, um, Two up back, two H back look, and we'll run power, counter, stretch, uh, max protect passing, but also love to run wedge out of this. Um, so we'll wedge, wedge with our interior five, and those two up backs will uh, fit right off to the edge. And there's, there's a clip I'm going to show you about. Uh, uh, when I get to the clip, there is a clip of this from this year. Um, you know, and just like anything else, you know, it's, kids are going to be kids. They're going to mess things up, but. Um, and a lot of times, you know, like that left tackle right there, he may fit inside that end right there in the backer. You may have the backer and the end off that edge. So we just tell that um, that up back to he's going to he's going to scrape right off of that tackle's butt as he's wedging inside. And we're just going to clean up anything that tries to fill in behind him. So, you know, you may end up having one of those backers come in unblocked. and They'll loop around and try to grab your runner from behind. Um, and in, in times we've done, you know, we'll pull it with a quarterback, let him read that back uh, backer and things like that. But um, 
this has been real big for us over the years. When I was at Plain Dillon, uh, we ran this a lot. Um, I think, yeah. And we, we scored a touchdown in a game. We, ended up, we lost our quarterback. He got kicked out of the game, put him on defense, and he got kicked out of the game um, for targeting, of all things. He never even played defense, and we put him over there, and he gets kicked out of the game for targeting. But our backup came in, and we were able to run. We had to kind of go to this because he wasn't much of a thrower compared to the other guy. And uh, we got in this something, ended up going for the game-winning uh, drive and, and two-point conversion. And we, we did run this a couple times uh, and got some pretty key first downs. Um. This is a play we ran uh, in the playoffs back in, I think, 2017, uh, 16, 17. And uh, this was just you know, our way of running the wedge. And we just called it wedge, wedge option. And uh, we basically had one up back, H back, and he would block the opposite side uh, in man line scrimmage. And we'd read the front side and we would just run wedge. And if, if he crashed, we'd pull it. And we'd read the force player and we'd run a little key screen outside. Um, and it's funny how those guys suck in on that wedge, especially if you're running it a lot and you're really kind of getting a lot of yards on. Those guys are really going to hammer down and try to take away that wedge. You can pull it and even have the quarterback run the alley or he can kick it outside. Um, like I said, we had a lot of success in, in that. Um, just uh, we ran it, I think, two or three games in the playoffs or lead them to the playoffs and in the playoffs and uh, had a really good athlete back there, quarterback, and uh, you know, really made them respect him to where that wedge would really go. Um, I'm gonna get you some clips real quick. Here's my contact information. Uh, this is kind of last minute. I, I plan on talking about Buck Sweep a lot, but um, I kind of wanted I really wanted y'all to kind of get some information on this wedge because I felt like um, it's just not a lot of information out there. And I feel like even if you're not running double tight double wing, you can really use this play to um, you know attack the interior of the defensive. And you'll see in some of these clips, you know, we really, you know, get a lot of movement. And uh, these are all from earlier in the season for the most part. And we got better as the season went on. Um, but uh, let me go and go to huddle real quick and I will. Let's say I will. Y'all still there with me? Yep. I got eight. Wait, um, I'm still seeing your, um, what's it called? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I got you, Coach. Can you hear me? Possibly. Yeah. Yep. I hadn't heard you the whole time, so if you've been talking, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm enjoying it. I, I Again, this, this has been a great day for me. First time I've ever seen um, clinics on uh, under center trap and wedge. So I'm enjoying life right now, Coach. So you, you're good to go. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna just go through a few of these. Some of them are really good, and some of them are really bad. And uh, you know, we got guys that, like I said, you know, all it takes is one guy to mess up and uh, not do his job and really ruin something. And you know, you can see in some of these, some guys don't do their job, and we still get lucky and get yards. But um, you know, some that you think, you know, hey, if you know, if we would have this guy would have done this, we may have got three or four more yards. So. Here we have a guy in our 52. He's a backup lineman, you know, but he's probably the, we kind of said, hey, if we're going to run the wedge and run power out of this double tight double wing, who's the one kid that we feel like can can run the ball well enough to be able to be a threat here, but also will be a good guy to kick out, you know, the in man line scrimmage on power and things like that. And it was this guy, he's a backup lineman. And, and later in the year, here we actually put him in a in a uh, eligible number to run bootleg and things like that to get him out in the flats. But um, this is this is a thing like week two or three. Um, so this, like I said, this is going to be all under center, double tight, double wing, maybe a couple of like, uh, and you can see right there, there's two defensive ends. They just kind of run field. They don't really know where the ball is. And then all, then they come back and, and grab from behind. But by that time, you know, we've got six or I think five or six yards at least. We're not doing a great job. Um, you can kind of see these guys try to fit in there, but they're still, you know, they're still getting shoulder to shoulder. And driving in there, we get a lot of guys getting a lot of movement. But as you can see right there, one guy leaks through and kind of creates a little bit of a gap to where they can right between 11 and 50, 55, 65 right there. So um, you got to be patient. You got to stay together. You can't allow yourself to drift outside. All right, here's against uh, another team. Uh, this, this is actually a little later in the season. We got a little bit better at it. You can see the guys actually get behind that center and drive him in there. 
let me go slow slow forward where you can kind of see the two guards get in our center's very small this year he was about 170 pounds if that much but we had two really big guards and as you can see in that play right there he just disappears the, the center does because those guys get their shoulders on there um and their hips come together and now they're the new you know lead on the point of attack right there uh wings are faking right there and you got guys in the back not really know where the ball is and we just kind of ride that wave right there for a gain of about seven or eight yards the play a few more time all right so this here is the same uh, team we're in a different formation here we're kind of offset with the pullback out of the high and it's you know same thing we're just kind of going at an angle and, and, and getting the handoff now, you know, right there, we'd like for him to be a little more patient, but he saw, you know, right there on the goal line, if you see an open like that and the goal line's right there, go for it. And that was his first touchdown of the year, I think. All right, this is against, uh, this is against a team that has some, you know, some pretty good D linemen. They definitely had a really good offensive line. And uh, we get a little bit of movement right here. And uh, but you can see th this is one example of not being as good as it should be. Uh, when you look, when you run the play, you look up, you see a lot of individual linemen kind of just trotting down the field. They're not really together. Then they hadn't really done their job very well. And as you can see, they really come apart right here. Instead of coming in and staying together. They start looking back and trying to find the ball, then that's usually not going to be as good of a run as it should have been. But we still pick up, you know, five or six yards, so it wasn't terrible. All right, this is this is week one. I think this is actually the first time we ran wedge all season. Um, and this turned out to be a you know pretty decent play right here for us. You can see that defensive end at first, he doesn't really on the top up top up there, he don't know where the ball is. And at the very last second, the ball shoot, you know, slips underneath him right there. And he ends up being the one that makes the play, but it's touchdown saving at that point. Especially if you got a running back that's kind of smaller, uh, shorter, and he gets lost up in that uh that pile. It makes it really hard for the defense to locate him, especially, you know, when you got three other backs that are potentially have the ball. Here, we're not trying to fool anybody. We're just this, uh, the yard, I can't tell what down this is, but, you know, we're just, the wings are just wedging up there as well. Might have been, you know, fourth and short or something like that. All right, so here's the, I think this may be close to the last one. Here's out of the uh, two H back formation. Uh, the H back up front runs by this guy. This linebacker had like 20 tackles in this game, like he was a machine. But you have all guys not to, you know, to not block. This is the wrong one. But um, but even then, he, you know, he's making the play. But he's having to redirect and come around and grab him from behind. So still a decent play for us. I think this may be the last one. Maybe. I want to show this one right here just to show the you know the that center right there those two guards you know they they once they attacked his butt watch how it shoots him out of there i mean he got you know a lot of drive on that that d lineman right there of course i think it was actually a linebacker that walked up kind of a smaller guy but got plenty of movement didn't get a lot of yards we, we failed but you can see there's a lot of force popping out right there in that a gap Okay, yeah, that's the same one. Um, like I said, that's you know that's my contact information. Um, you can reach me at uh, email, you text me or whatever. I, I don't have a lot of answers, but I'll make it help you out. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of uh, information on the, the internet about wedge, middle wedge, uh, a little bit here and there, but um, definitely you know you can you know if it's even anything double wing or or single wing or, or spread whatever, I'm, I'm definitely willing to talk to anybody. So. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I, I definitely try my best to answer them. Well, well Coach, I appreciate, I appreciate it. Um, I'm trying to think if I got anything because, like I said, I've read Wedge it on and off over the years. Um, and kind of like you said, I mean, I, I think kind of them just not stepping in timing or them doing their own thing kind of breaks the wedge and kind of messes up. Yeah. 
a bunch of it. Um, how much, I mean, how much from a practice standpoint, how much time or are there any little uh, tidbits that you focus on in practice when you're working on it? Uh, early in the season, you know, ideally we'd like to get them to, you know, we'd like to put them together. This is how we kind of teach it. We like to put them together in that. Um, we like to get them fitted in like this right here, and then we'll destruct it. We'll, we'll have them go back to their stance, and we'll come back and go out and come back. You know, if we have time, that's how we like to teach it. Um, and then we'll get them into form from, from you know, from a cadence, get them to step, and then we'll tell them to go, and they'll start just marching down the field, and we'll just they'll just march in line. Um just to get that feeling of staying together. Um, and I think, you know, as the season goes on, you know, it's probably best to do that, you know, just that fit and form uh, at least once a week, just to make sure they get it. Um, and then of course, you know, we run it, you know, we, we do some, we do a lot of goal line uh, drills uh, and we, you know, double wing, don't, you know, the double wing, we call it power hour. We'll get in there and run power as many times as we can from the, you know, from the five yard line and the defense will, you know, add a player every time we score. So you may end up running power, versus uh you know 20 guys sometimes and we try to do the same thing with wedge when we get opportunities um but just you know get into that fit into that form uh keeping uh you know high knees don't drag your feet because that's the worst thing you can if you trip one guy trips it's going to be domino effect and everybody's falling and you know the back can will trip over everybody that happens a lot um so you really have to tell you know, teach them to you know be patient um be in, in, in a good tight fit and keep their feet up and driving uh, high knees and low, you know, keep their back down and just drive and push on the guy inside of you. And um, so, you know, we try to, like I said, ideally practice that at least once a week uh, just to make sure they, they understand that fit and how it feels to be able to get into that position and, and, and drive down the field. Okay. Well, perfect coach. Uh, coaches, make sure you reach out. To, uh, let's see. Actually, I do have one more quick question before we move on to our next yeah. speaker. Um, and this is from one of our viewers. Do your linemen crowd the ball? What is your depth? Uh, does it change any for when you run wedge or does it say the same? What does what kind of that look like? Okay, so our, our current and, – and we've, we've had a, over the years in spread, especially when we're, you know, normal foot and a half to two foot, um, we've kind of been guilty of cheating in a little bit on our wedge. Um I don't like to do that, but you know, it happens sometimes, especially a lot. They do it on their own sometimes. So they know they got to get in that fit. Uh, that's, you know, you really got to practice a little more if you're in a spread trying to get to that fit. Uh, us, you know, currently in the double wing, um, we're kind of up off the ball. We're foot to foot, uh, but we are, uh, as far as our splits, but we are very deep. We, we teach our guys to put their hand on the toe of the center. Um, that keeps us legal, but also as deep as possible to keep uh, guys from cutting us. Uh, when we're pulling and things like that, and it really helps us get around the backside. You know, we're pulling guards and tackles on power. Um, so we're really, really, really tight, but we are off the ball pretty pretty deep. Okay. Perfect, Coach. Thank you. Um, and then, like I said, you're you're good to go, Coach. And like I said, Coaches, um, you can use his, your email or give him a phone call or text, and uh, Coach will get back to you if you have any further, further questions for Coach. So thank you, Coach. Right, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. You too.